Okay guys, I'm back on the tuning condenser here on the Zenith 707 and you can see just the amount of rust. And I've got the ultrasonic uh, cleaner out. So I'm going to mix up some citric acid with water and uh, heat that up and uh, give this thing uh, numerous baths. And of course we'll change the uh, water citric acid mixture out a few times along. Before I do that, let me back out the screws here and remove the uh, mica here in these trimmers. See if we can preserve those. They already look like they're in bad shape, so we'll probably end up replacing those anyway. And then, of course, the dial light itself will come off. And then I'll leave these fasteners on for now. And then probably back those uh, off as well. And I'll do the same for this side, then we'll get the mixture made up and get this thing started. It's probably going to take a good uh, hour, maybe even more. You can see I've got the uh, tuning condenser opened up almost 100% uh, here. And I'm going to just lay it down on this side. And add just a little more water here to get. To. And I'm going to just add about one scoop here, maybe two, of the citric acid. Then I'll check the uh, pH here, make sure it's uh, fairly acidic. Let the ultrasonic cleaner run for a few minutes and help dissolve some of the citric acid. Then we'll put a strip in and just check the uh, pH level of the water. Yeah, I forgot I had my uh, three-way meter here. Use out here for the uh, tomato plants, etc. Just to uh, check the pH and moisture. And uh, you can see we're sitting around four, four and a half on the uh, pH level. That's a couple scoops there. The citric acid here back up to my uh, fill line. After six cycles of 480 seconds heated, I changed the water, made another bath, got rid of a lot of the uh, crud and filth, and uh, we'll let this run for another five, six, or even longer. And I'll repeat the uh, process. Well, getting there, you can see we're able to break a lot of the uh, rust loose. I'm just using a light abrasive uh, Scotch-Brite pad over the uh, rusty areas here. I'm going to change the uh, nasty water here one more time. Mix up one more solution and uh, run another uh, maybe five or so cycles. And then go rinse it off and uh, thoroughly give this thing a nice dry. And then we'll put some uh, rust inhibitor on the tuning condenser and uh, set it aside. The two pieces of mica in the trimmers on the variable condenser are pretty fragile. I'm going to go ahead and replace them. We've got a whole bag full of uh, mica so let me go ahead and get this lined up here. Yeah, I found just doing my little hand drill was better. The mica will fracture and break pretty easy. There we have it. And then the length has to be trimmed off as well. Here on this side not to impair the rotation of the uh, rotor itself. So you can see there I'll trim off uh, a couple millimeters. Okay, that should work. Let me go ahead and put those back in the uh, tuning condenser and we'll take a look at it. And took time here to go ahead and solder on a new uh, grid lead connection as well. Let's take a look at the completed uh, tuning condenser now. And check it and make certain that we don't have any uh, shorts between the uh, stator and rotor for each section. 
just finished placing the uh, new mica pieces in and that's what I was talking about if it's showing up there. I wanted to make certain that the uh, tuning condenser, the uh, rotor section, didn't contact those. So they just had to be trimmed off a bit. And uh, there's the uh, clean tuning condenser now. Uh, pretty much rust free. Again, I've still got to put a rust inhibitor on it. Everything's nice and dry. But uh, what I want to do next is check and make sure the uh, we don't have any shorts between the uh, stator and rotor. Let me get the uh, digital multimeter over here. We'll make a, a check for both sections, the uh, rear and the front, and uh, make sure we're good. If I recall correctly, the uh, rear section had a short, and I didn't take any time to try to uh, mitigate that before cleaning the uh, tuning condenser. It looks a heck of a lot better than it did before, that's for sure. All right, all I want to do is just ground the uh, one lead here to the uh, outside of the uh, tuning condenser. And again, I'm in diode mode. We'll hear this thing uh, beep if we've got a short. And uh, you can see I'm attaching here to the uh, one side, the front side of the uh, tuning condenser. Let's rotate this thing through. Stiff. I have not put any uh, grease or oil yet on here on the bearings. All right. At least we don't have a short. We'll check uh, capacitance as well here in just a moment. Check this rear section. This is one I had problems with. I think. Yep. All right, let's see if we can solve that issue real quick. You can see I've got a piece of plastic here if it's showing up. It's uh, transparency film. And I'm just going to uh, place the uh, plastic down in here between the uh, rotor and stator plates. Okay, there's our short. It just happens to be the very end on the uh, rotor. All right, let me rotate this back around. Let's see if we can uh, actually bend that plate back out just a bit and solve the issue. Should be a simple fix. It appears this uh, center plate right here is uh, bent in just a bit. So I'm going to just take it and bend it just a little bit. And uh, there we have it. Simple and easy to uh, fix. I didn't expect to find a, a bent plate. I thought that uh, it was just full of gunk. Let's check the uh, capacitance range itself of the uh, tuning condenser. With the uh, plates wide open here, 30 picofarads. And 450-460. Four fifty-two, so it's pretty close. Again, the trimmers on the top will add or take away capacitance as well. They'll need to be adjusted when we do the uh, RF alignment. All right, let me go ahead and put some uh, grease and oil in the uh, bearings and around the shaft here. Loosen this thing up a bit and uh, test it one more time offline. I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Everyone out there, uh, take care.